Welcome back to Speed Reels. Today I'm going to explain sci-fi, action movie called Planet of the Apes. In year 2029, Leo Davidson is an astronaut that works for two years closely with chimpanzees to train them for space missions for the United States Air Force Space Research Station, Oberon. Chimpanzee Pericles is his favorite. When an electromagnetic storm hits the station, they receive frequency patterns of electronic communication from Earth from all times. In order to obtain the first radiation and gamma ray measurements for the storm, Commander Vazic orders that Pericles goes with the Alpha space pod into the storm's core to test if it's safe to go. Leo thinks it's a waste of time and refuses to send Pericles. He offers himself instead but the commander refuses. Pericles smiles at Leo before he leaves and Leo tells him to come home after the mission. The chimpanzee's pod approaches the storm center, then mysteriously vanishes. Leo buckles up in the delta pod and goes after Pericles without the authorization of Vazic, who demands him to come back but Leo refuses saying, never send a monkey to do a man's work. Once he enters the storm, he loses connection with Oberon station. Meanwhile, at the station, they receive a mayday message. It's their own mayday from the future. The storm Storm takes Leo further, while the digital year indicator rapidly moves 100s of years ahead. He falls into a pool of water in the middle of a jungle on an unknown planet. The water gets inside the pod so he explodes the emergency door open, takes his helmet off, and swims out of the water. He soon hears rustling sounds and looks up to see a bearded man and a young woman, among many people following. They all seem to be running away from roaring apes with helmets and armor. Leo follows them while the apes catch a few humans and put them in a cage cart. The cart was pulled by enslaved humans. During the chase, one ape pushes Leo to fall on the ground. When Leo looks at the ape leader General Thade, he gets offended and takes him to the cart. The planet is full of apes living like humans but hating on humans. The ape kids in the streets throw rocks at the human's cart and call them dirty humans. But the human rights activist, Ari, tells the kids to stop, making them call her human lover. The humans get delivered to Limbo, the slave trader, who tells his staff to wear gloves while dealing with humans. General Thade comes to buy a five-year-old girl as a pet for his niece. Limbo gives her a leash as a gift. Ari feels disgust by the way they treat humans. As Limbo brands his slaves with iron, Ari jumps and takes the iron stick from his worker and throws it away. It lands next to Leo who takes it slowly. While Ari explains to Limbo that humans aren't stupid and can be taught to live as equal to them, Leo takes the iron and strangles her close to the cage. He asks her to help him. While they're distracted by Leo, Dana tries to escape but Limbo catches her. Ari decides to buy both of them, Leo and Dana. Limbo delivers her the slaves but her father, Senator Sondar, has a society dinner which includes a number of senators, their wives, and General Thade. He tells her to keep her humans out of sight. They work in the kitchen with the other two house humans, Tyvel and Bon, who are supervised by a large, elder ape named Kroll, an ex-ape army general who opposed Thade and had his career ruined. General Thade arrives late with his colonel adder as he was visiting his dying father. They talk about how humans are outnumbering the apes four to one, because of the quick breeding on the outskirts of ape civilization. Senator Nato mentions the diseases that humans carry. Ari says that they wouldn't know as the army burns the bodies before they're examined and she gestures at her father. So he explains that the Senate feels that the army has been a bit extreme. To that Thade explains that extremism in defense of apes is no vice. She explains how humans are skilled and they have souls. When Leo walks with the tray of food, Thade grabs him, presses on his face, and opens his mouth to look for a soul. Everyone at the table laughs except for Ari who storms to her room. Thade follows her to her room and tells her that he cares about her. When she rejects him, he tells her that he can have her arrested. At night, Leo and Dana were kept in a cage. He uses a knife he stole from the kitchen to open the cage and they escape. Meanwhile, two of Thade's soldiers take him to the pool of water where Leo fell. They tell him that something with wings of fire fell from the sky. Thade kills the two soldiers to make sure that nobody knows about this. Leo and Dana go get her family where Limbo kept them. Leo breaks the wooden cage and they find that Tyvel followed them. Along with them, her father, Bryn, and Gunnar join the group and run through the houses. The apes see and chase them, but Ari and Kroll run into them first. Leo asks her to help them. She looks at him in a way that shows she likes and trusts him. Kroll and Ari guide them through a tunnel but Dana finds her father is injured. The injury slows him down making the colonel see him. Her father decides to sacrifice himself and goes to face the apes. He manages to distract them from running after his family but, eventually, Thade kills him. They go to where Leo fell with his pod. There, Ari tells them that apes are scared of the water because they drown. Leo dives into his pod and Dana follows him. She sees the dead soldiers that Thade killed. And Leo finds his bag which has his SOS gun and a messenger device amongst other things. He finds he's got contact on the messenger which mean that his colleagues are already here. As they're walking through the jungle, Limbo finds them and grabs Gunner. Gunner resists and elbows Limbo in the face. Bryn jumps and beats Limbo but his two assistants catch him. Leo fires his SOS gun scaring the assistants away. Leo tells Gunner to handcuff Limbo and 
and take him with them, otherwise, he'd lead Thaid and others to them. On their way, Leo tells Ari that humans kept the last of the remaining apes, who don't talk, in zoos. He noted that the more intelligent we grow, the more dangerous the environment becomes. Ari was taken aback by his unusually sensitive behavior for a man. While their admiration for each other grows, Dana gets jealous. Senator Sander asks Thade to find his daughter. Thade takes this opportunity to ask him to give him absolute power to get rid of all the humans on this planet once and for all. While on his way to get the human, a messenger tells him that his father, Senator Zayas, calls for him. While Senator Zayas is on his deathbed, he tells Thade what generations before him have passed on, that humans were once the masters and apes were the slaves. He tells him to break an antique vase. He finds a gun inside of it. Zayas explains that the gun is the proof for humans' power of technology and invention. He warns him that no creature is as devious as humans and he shouldn't let them go to Kalima. Damn them, were Zayas's last words. Leo's messenger device indicates that his crew is at Kalima. Ari tells them that according to the ape's sacred texts, Kalima is where the Almighty breathed life into Seamus, the first ape and it's where Seamus will return. However, she doubts whether there ever actually was a Seamus and that the narrative was just a metaphor or fairy tale. Colonel Adder arrives to the defense's camp and warns them about the humans escaping with apes. Leo makes the plan for everyone to get on the camp's horses and cross the river. Ari, Krull, and Limbo get scared of the water but Leo insists. He fires the SOS gun to distract the apes while they go right through the camp. During the battle, the apes hurt Limbo and throw fire at Ari's horse who gets scared and drops Ari to the ground. They tangle Leo's horse's leg and he falls off the horse. He runs toward the river and finds Ari scared so he carries her on his back and takes her through the water. Because she's terrified of water, she holds on to him very tightly. Once they reach to the other side, Dana sees that Leo's shoulder is hurt from Ari's fingers. Thade arrives after it's too late with his big army of soldiers. He orders the divisions to be formed. Meanwhile, Leo's device guides them to area where he finds a human skull and the letters C.A. Lee M.A. on a concrete wall. When Leo brushes his hand across the letters, they turn out to be a warning message, caution live animals. As he goes further in the area, he sees the animal cages from the Oberon, his former space station. He understands that, Kalim the supposedly forbidden ape holy location, is just the wreckage of the USAF research station. He plugs in his device, turns the control panel, and he breaks the dry mud that accumulated on the screen. He finds the Mayday message from his commander. He explains that they went to find him after he got lost in the storm, and when they landed on this unidentified planet, the apes got wild and rebelled, especially Seamus who led all the apes to take control over the planet. After they got out of the Kalima area, they find all the humans on the planet come to see Leo, the human who rebelled against the apes. They look at him with hope even though he doesn't feel like such a hero after what he learned. In the evening, Bryn sees Thade's army is coming toward them. He sees how huge the army is, making Kroll understand that the Senate gave in to Thade and gave him the full power. Leo feels helpless and tells the people that they just need to survive now and there's no help coming. But Dana tells him that he's the help that came. When Ari understands how he feels weak, she takes Kroll and cross the river to meet Thade. She offers herself as a trade for humans. When she reaches her hand out to Thade, he shames her and brands the palm of her hand with the human brand. When Leo plugs the device again into the ship, he finds that the third rocket fuel cell is full. He determines that they got one shot. He makes a plan to draw the apes in close, while the humans, led by Bryn, hide behind the ship, and a small group led by Dana acts as a bait on horses at the front. But Bryn decides to join with the front group. Once Thade sends one group of soldiers, Dane and the group lead them toward the ship while Bryn's horse falls and traps him under. Leo runs to save Bryn while the apes come closer. Leo runs faster to hide with humans behind the ship and explodes the rocket. Thade watches his soldiers fly, while humans run to kill them. Thade decides to go in there by himself. The soldiers follow him. It's a complete battlefield, humans versus apes. Ari sees a soldier almost kills Dana, so she jumps and saves her. When Dana sees the human mark in Ari's hand, she starts to respect her. Meanwhile, Kroll and Adder make an eye contact vow to kill each other. But Adder wins and stabs him dead, while Thade finds Leo and make the same vow. However, while Thade strangles Leo to the ground, they hear an explosion. Light comes from the sky as another pod arrives. The door opens, and it turns out to be Pericles. He recognizes Leo and gives him a thumbs up and a smile. Kroll determines that the prophecy is true and Seamus returned. Pericles runs inside the station to get to his cage. Leo runs after him followed by Thade. When Thade fights with Leo, Pericles defends him and gets injured. Leo manages to fire his gun at Thade, who gets injured then knocks the gun off Leo's hand, punches him and takes the gun. He doesn't know how to even hold it and fires at the walls. When he finally points the gun at Leo, who notices the door control is right next to him, Leo presses it with one quick move and closes the door trapping Thade inside the bridge room. Thade fires the gun but the glass is bulletproof reflecting the bullets all over the room. Thade asks Colonel Adder to help him calling him his, friend, but Leo tells him that he's been lying to him and humans and apes have always lived in peace together. Adder decides not to help him. He begs Ari to help him, 
She puts her hand on the glass showing him her human brand on her palm. The bullets keep on reflecting scaring Fade, forcing him to hide under one of the panels. While Ari covers Kroll's body with sand, Colonel Adder decides that it's time for humans and apes to live in peace together. Leo finds Pericles in his cage, and tells Ari to take good care of him before he walks toward the pod. Ari tells him to stay but he decides to go back to his world. She tells him that apes will tell the story of the human, that fell from the sky and changed their world. Even though some would say it's a fairy tale, but she'll always know. Leo leans in and kisses her sealing the love they shared during the hard circumstances. Dana takes the chance to kiss him as well, before he enters the pod. He goes through the storm one last time, while the year indicator moves rapidly backward. He finds planet Earth, but once he enters, he hears someone from the mission control telling him that to abort as he's entering a restricted area. It's too late as the pod crushes right in front of Lincoln's statue, which is the face of Thade. Behind him written, in this temple as in the hearts of the apes, for whom he saved the planet the memory of General Thade is enshrined forever. He hears the sirens with hundreds of policemen pointing their guns at him, and reporters taking his pictures. How do you think Thade landed on Earth? Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this.